Hello, welcome to this lesson in Calculus 1 Limits. This will be our last lesson in this batch of lessons that we're talking about limits here. And we're going to tie it all together uh, by talking about the continuity of a function. I've kind of hinted many, many times as we've studied this stuff that you might have a continuous or a smooth function and limits are better behaved when we're talking about those types of functions. And we've actually already kind of talked about this in previous lessons, but we're going to tie it all together and talk about the definition of a continuous function here. So recall that we can have a couple of different situations when we plot functions. So here's f of x that we'll plot. Uh, we can have a situation where we have the function being very nicely behaved, and then suddenly at this point we have an instantaneous jump over here. See, the difference between this and this, as soon as you reach this point, boom, you jump right up there at the point A. Okay. So we know from experience that if we take the left-hand limit, we're going to get this value. If we take the right-hand limit, we'll get this value. And because they don't match the limit as x approaches a of this function f of x does not exist. And we've talked about that very uh, frequently in the last section. So we already know that. Okay. But there's another situation over here that I know that you also know. We're just kind of reviewing a little bit. x and f of x. Okay. So we can have a situation where the function does not have any kind of discontinuous jump. It might just continue like this. You see I've kind of connected the dots here and the function just kind of continues. And at the same value a, right, if we had this situation, then we would basically say the limit uh, as x approaches a from the left of this function is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right of this function, right, which is also equal to the, what we call now the two-sided limit of f of x. And we say that it exists, and its value is just whatever we calculate coming from the left, coming from the right, they're going to meet in the middle, and that is the value of what we call the two-sided limit. So in one case, we have a limit that doesn't exist, or the two-sided limit does not exist. Uh, and this two-sided limit, limit doesn't exist here. Now, when I say the limit doesn't exist, I mean the two-sided limit. Of course, the left-hand limit exists and the right-hand limit exists. But put together, these guys do not exist as a two-sided limit here. So the one thing you can kind of surmise from looking at this is this function, just from looking at it, looks to be a very smooth and continuous function. What I mean by that is everywhere you trace your finger, you don't run into any gaps or any discontinuous jumps. Whereas if you come here and you hit a discontinuous jump, you know that that's not a very well-behaved function. So a definition that you'll find in your book is a function is continuous at a point. Uh, the point we're always talking about is the point A, if, and I know you can guess the punchline because we've drawn it on the board, if the limit as x approaches A of f of x, okay, get ready for the punchline, is equal to the function evaluated at A. Okay, make sure you understand what that's basically saying. Because I've, I've kind of hinted so many times and kind of I taught you this without even really telling you I was teaching it. I basically told you over and over and over again, I said think of a polynomial, it's always smooth and continuous. And when you're evaluating the limit, you just plug in the value. That's the limit, okay? You only really have to worry if you get these weird discontinuous jumping functions or if you get zero over zero, you have to do a little more work. But ultimately, if it's smooth and continuous and well behaved, you should just be able to plug in the value into the function and that's going to be the value of the limit. That's all it's saying. 